Cinema Paradiso was released in 1998 and was directed by Giuseppe Tornatore and stars Philip Norrett, Salvatore Casillo, Marco Leonardi, and Jacques Perrin, and tells the story of a filmmaker who recalls his childhood when falling in love with the pictures at the cinema of his home village and forms a deep friendship with the cinema's projectionist. This is a movie that's been on my watch list for some time now, and after watching it, it's crazy that it's taken me until now to do so, but I'm so glad I finally did. Cinema Paradiso is one of the most beloved international films of all time. Upon its release, it won many awards, winning in particular Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards, and is now considered by many to be one of the greatest films of all time. It's a movie that celebrates the love of movies and many of the films we have today that run with that concept owe a lot to this film. Now, I have previously seen one of the director's other movies, The Legend of 1900, which is an Italian-English language film, and I absolutely love that movie and would rank it among some of my favorite movies of all time. So I was curious to see the movie he had made previously that has been shown so much love ever since its release. And after watching it, I have to say without a doubt, this is one of the greatest movies I have ever seen. But before we get into that, let's do what we always do here and go behind the scenes to see just how this film was made. As you might expect for a movie so intimate as this, Cinema Paradiso was born from director Tornatore's own experiences through adolescence and his natural love of film. As for the film itself, it was actually shot in the director's hometown of Bulgaria, Sicily, and the Paradiso Cinema was built in a square in the village of Palazzo Adriano, where it overlooked an octagonal Baroque fountain, which dates back to 1608. The film is mostly told in flashback through the character of Salvatore's childhood years, and is, as I mentioned, heavily inspired by the director's own upbringing to an extent, and the film has become a huge example for nostalgic postmodern Modernism, as the film combines elements of sentimentality with comedy and nostalgia with pragmatism. The movie is ultimately a reflection on youth and the past during adulthood and reflects the main character's memories of childhood. But ultimately, the movie is a celebration of film. It will be interesting to note that the film exists in multiple versions. The most common cut of the film, the American theatrical release distributed by Harvey Weinstein, is one that cuts the nearly three-hour runtime to two hours. When the film originally premiered in Italy, the film had a lengthy three-hour runtime, and this cut was not met with nearly the same amount of fanfare as the cut down version spearheaded by Weinstein, which strips away many subplots in an entirely new third act from the film. This two-hour cut is the one that majority of viewers have seen and is still to this day the preferred version of the film. Due to this change, Cinema Paradiso became a huge success financially, making 36 million US dollars in the US, France, and Italy alone on a budget of only 5 million. Critical reception also improved with the new cut, and it quickly became a critical and award season favorite, and is now considered one of the greatest films of all time. Since its release, though, the extended cut has been made available to watch, and many find it an interesting exercise in the process of movie making, but find the theatrical version to still be preferred over the extended runtime, which forms an argument that more is not always better, which has often been the case when it comes to extended editions and director's cuts in the past 20 or so years. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's go into my thoughts on the film. Cinema Paradiso has always been one of those films that is considered as 
must-see viewing for any film lover. It's kind of like Citizen Kane or Casablanca. You hear about it from word of mouth, and it's held up in such high regard that you're unsure when you actually watch it if you're even going to think it's all that good. I look back at films like Citizen Kane, a film I love and appreciate for all the reasons it's still celebrated for today, but the first time I watched it, I didn't get it, and wonder if I had seen Cinema Paradiso around the same time as the first viewing of Citizen Kane, if I would have considered it in the same way. Good, but not that good. Well, now I think I'm at the perfect age to really take in a film like Cinema Paradiso, because I think this is one of the greatest films ever made. It's so funny going into this film, seeing already how influential it is because there's so many movies released in the past several years that take elements from this film for their own. One of the most recent examples of this is Steven Spielberg's most recent film, The Fablemans, which was inspired by his own upbringing and is about the love of filmmaking through the main character's life. A film that also is heavily inspired by this film, and I will be bringing up later in the review is the movie Babylon. But it's just so interesting seeing a film that is not even that old being such an influential piece of art for other filmmakers and I think is proof of the staying power of this movie. I want to approach this film a little differently than I normally would, and it's something I might want to start adding to my reviews in the future by looking at the intention behind the film. As I briefly mentioned in my behind-the-scenes segment, Cinema Paradiso is an example of nostalgic postmodernism. Nostalgia plays a very important role in the film, as we see Alfredo reminisce about his upbringing and his love of film. It's a sentimental film that never uses that sentiment for a cheap emotional jab to the audience. Everything is done earnestly, which is so refreshing to see because this kind of film could easily get really sappy really fast, and that's a thin line that can't be crossed in these kinds of films. This rides the line and never crosses it, which makes it stand out as an example of how to do sentimentality the correct way in the film. We should feel the emotions because they feel earned and not the film manipulating us to care through something like its music. I think the film also does a good job of exploring how we look at the past, particularly our childhood. That sense of nostalgia rides through the whole movie, and the flashback scenes almost feel dreamlike, like a fairy tale we're witnessing, and everything just feels so big and exaggerated, and the use of comedy through the story allows the world to have that sense of innocence. Everything was so much simpler as a child, and I think Cinema Paradiso so paints a beautiful picture of that. But the film doesn't shy away from the darkness as well. The majority of the film is set against the backdrop of an Italy that has just experienced the events of World War II. We see some of the destruction left behind, and Salvatore is unaware if his father is alive or dead since he's never returned home after the war. I think this is a perfect representation of how nostalgia works in different ways. We can still be nostalgic for the good and the bad things in life, even through the worst of times, and that's captured brilliantly here. I must give credit where credit is due to the three behind-the-scenes people that really make this film special. The first being the director, Giuseppe Tornatore, who combines his directing and writing sensibilities in such a profoundly nostalgic and sweet way. You can feel the passion for the love of the art form and childhood through his writing and how he develops his characters. Some characters feel exaggerated to a degree, but they also feel like real people. Like, these are people the director grew up with and knows inside and out. Combine that with Blasco Gerardo's gorgeous cinematography, and you have a match made in heaven. The cinematography looks incredible here, and the scenes that take place during the early childhood of our main character feel grand, large, and very old world. For a movie released in 1988, there's something about it that feels much older and dirtier and still very sacred and beautiful. 
Then as time periods shift and our lead grows up, we see the way everything changes, much like the movies themselves. The poignancy in the writing also gives us insight into the history of cinema, such as Alfredo the Projectionist telling his story of how the cinema used to work when he was a kid. We learn about the flammability of film and see the effects of it, and we end up learning from the film. I also need to bring up the legendary composer himself, Ennio Morricone, who is responsible for many of the most iconic spaghetti western music, adds a sentimentality to the film with a roaring score that is sweet, gentle, and emotionally impactful. This is one of the best uses of a film score I've seen, and it doesn't manipulate you, but enhances feelings you should already be experiencing by watching the movie. Now, let's get into our two leading characters. I first want to talk about the projectionist Alfredo, played by Norette, who is just incredible in this film. Acting as a father figure for our main character, we witness a true love for the art form of film through watching him. Norette makes Alfredo instantly likable and feels like you plucked your grandfather and put him in a film. He's so comforting to watch, and his relationship with Salvatore is the heart of the film, and as it's the main focus of the film itself, this is a perfect performance in an already perfect movie that's matched with the three actors that play Salvatore so well. Each actor that plays Salvatore brings a new complexity to the character. When he's young, we see the curiosity perfectly displayed, and he feels like a very curious and real kid. And then we move on to 18-year-old Salvatore, and he does such an amazing job of feeling like that character grown up, learning the lessons from when he was a kid and maturing into his own person. The romance scene between him and a young girl is so poignant and really does a great job of conveying the feeling of being in love. Then we finally have the adult and older Salvatore performance, which is all about reflection. There's far less dialogue with him as he observes his surroundings and his past. It's really incredible to watch. My favorite moments in the film include a scene where Alfredo visits Salvatore, who is now working as a projectionist. Alfredo is blind, and we then see this wonderful transition of Salvatore changing from young boy into a young man. The big moment for me is Alfredo's final conversation to Salvatore that to fulfill his dreams, he has to leave his hometown and to never look back, which is what he ultimately ends up doing, and in doing so, finds success, but loses that connection with the people of his village. I also really want to discuss this ending as well, because this is simply one of the most satisfying and heartbreaking endings to a film I have ever seen. If you don't want to be spoiled by the film's ending, skip ahead if you wish. But earlier on in the film, it's set up that the priest of the village has Alfredo censor the movies he shows by cutting out anything referencing kissing or sex, and Salvatore wants to have them. At the end of the film, Alfredo left Salvatore a film reel after his death, and he views it to reveal it's all of those scenes spliced together, and it moves him to the point of tears. It's profoundly reflective and is exactly what Damien Chazelle was going for with the ending of Babylon. But he twists that ending into being a celebration of cinema rather than an important moment for the character. And that's why it ends up being my least favorite moment in that film and the only flaw I have with it. That is not the case here. This ending is beautiful, impactful, and will have you shedding a few tears for sure. Cinema Paradiso is a masterpiece. It's a love letter to not only film, but to growing up. It shows us many different viewpoints of a person's life and provides us with happy memories of nostalgia. It's a loving film made by someone with a lot of admiration for his work and is sentimental in the best ways. The performances are stellar and the music is breathtaking and impactful to listen to. There's not a single flaw in this movie. It left me with a deep appreciation for the love of filmmaking, but it also left me with a deep feeling of love and happiness for my own childhood and upbringing. 
that's the heart of Cinema Paradiso. It's not just about a boy's love of filmmaking, it's about the people and the town that shaped him into the man he ended up becoming. Perhaps there's some regret there, things we wish we had done, but hey, that's life, and I think Cinema Paradiso captures that feeling in a way no other movie really has. So, with all that said, I'm gonna give Cinema Paradiso a 10 out of 10. As soon as I finished this film, I knew there was no way I wasn't going to give this a 10. This is one of the best films I've ever seen, and it really impacted me on an emotional level that many of my favorite films of all time end up doing best. This is a powerful film and definitely worth a watch. Those who know me know that I take a 10 out of 10 film very seriously. It's not just something I think is the best of the best, but it's one of my favorites too, and there's a difference there. If you have never seen this movie and you've been thinking about seeing it, I say this is your chance to watch something that is truly meaningful and wonderfully crafted. It's my highest recommendation. I'm very interested to see how the longer cut of this movie compares to this film and how you can continue this film past its natural conclusion. That's something I'm very interested in, but for this review, I specifically wanted to talk about the two-hour version since it is the preferred cut of the film. But with all that said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and stay positive.